Well, thanks for being on with me, Jessica. Oh, well, thank you so much for having me. Our subject is blackout poetry. Uh, so to start off, let's just talk about poetry in general. When did that become part of, um, I guess, your life as a reader and your life as a writer? Yeah, sure. Um, I, I've always loved writing poetry. I think I, w I was writing poetry long before I ever tried to write any kind of stories or anything, um, which is probably true of most people. Um, I remember in elementary school, we had a, a week that was dedicated right. to poetry. <laughs> Yeah. And yeah, just one week. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I think it was probably like third, maybe it was like second grade. I don't quite remember, but we had to memorize one poem and recite it in front of the class. And like, this is usually something that like struck fear in everyone's heart because they don't want to get up and like recite a poem. Um, I, of course, you know, wanted to, I couldn't decide on which poem I wanted to do. So I, I memorized two. <laughs> Um, I, I, rem I memorized How Do I Love Thee um, and also The Unicorn by Shel Silverstein. Uh, so kind of two uh, opposing ends of the spectrum there. Um, and I totally like made my teacher have me do both of them because I was like, I can't <laughs> memorize two. Like, I, yeah, so I, I've always loved writing poetry. I have a whole bunch of stuff from my childhood where um, yeah, I have, a, I have one that's like a love poem to an alien, so that feels very on brand for yeah. me. <laughs> um, yeah, always. And because uh, so, I always wanted to be like a, a songwriter, too. Mm. So I would uh, write a lot of poetry and songs. Remember when I was a kid, the show Ghostwriter had a contest to like send in a new theme song. And I spent hours and hours like writing and recording potential ghostwriter theme songs, <laughs> which I am glad to say that I have since forgotten and lost the physical copies <laughs> of. There you go. <laughs> when you started um, writing more short stories and then novels and things like that, was there ever a point where poetry went to the background or was it always, did it always hold the same space in your life? Uh, yeah, I definitely uh, didn't focus on it as much uh, when I started writing novels, but still um, there was like my first novels that I ever wrote were uh, The Tales of Demetha Nador, which is like an uh, epic fantasy series, and there was all kinds of uh, songs and stuff in that. Uh, so, and I, I was very fond of writing um, kind of in the language that I invented, not at all biting off of any like fantasy authors that we're all aware of. Was not at all reading the Cimmerillion at the time. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, yeah, I would write it in in the language and then translate it, and it was oh my gosh, so many hours spent. Um, <laughs> and same with um, what uh, became Nightly Owl, Fatal Raven, um, when that was originally published, is from the Herald's Weary Eye. It had a couple more uh, poems and songs and stuff in it. So it was it was always kind of tied to it, but I there was definitely I yeah, I stopped writing it for a, a long time, though I did occasionally do like things like Napo Rimo and, and yeah. stuff like that. So I guess it always has been kind of in the background. Looking at blackout poetry in particular, I've been researching it some recently and it goes back a lot further than I thought. So yeah. it's um I guess if you if you isolate the modern era, it goes pretty far back into the modern era um, in one form or another. Uh, how far back does it go for you? When was when was that uh, an awareness for you? And when did it become sort of Jessica's thing? Um, I think the first one I really saw was oh, like 2016. Hmm. So not even not even that long ago. Um, I went to uh, Raw Dog Screaming Press's Dog Con 5. I had bought uh, a ticket for that and they made little gift bags and I, I'm not sure exactly whether it was Jennifer Barnes or John Edward Lawson, though I'd probably say it was probably John Edward Lawson, um, had made a, um, a blackout poem that was in the goodie bag and, you know, it was, it was just kind of a just scribble blackout, you know, wasn't too like crazy but it was this awesome poem about like the sea and a madman and like I loved it so much and I would just hang it on my wall and I'd see it every single day and um one day uh probably about like two years later I was like you know what I'm gonna give this a shot and 
I used a Game Informer magazine, which is probably the dumbest thing to try on for the first time. But I thought I was going to come up with like a really cool like sci-fi poem. Um, and it, it did not work out that way. And I was like, well, I'm terrible at this and I didn't touch <laughs> it again. <laughs> um, until uh, it was February 2019, uh, we were going through a bunch of financial troubles and I had started a, um, it was either a GoFundMe or something, something like that. Uh, people were donating money to help me out and I didn't just want to, you know, I hate, I hate having to do that and like, you know, needing money and needing help. So to, as like a thank you gift, I was like, well, I can't really afford to get people anything because I don't have any money. But I went to the dollar store and at the dollar store was a, uh, a Shirley Jackson book of essays and short stories. And at the dollar store, right. <laughs> I was like, what? So I got that and I just started making blackout poetry from it because I was like, well, even if it sucks, it's from the heart. <laughs> <laughs> um, but the more I did it, because you can even go back on like my Facebook memories that comes up all the time where I did like my first one from that book and I posted it and I was like, am I doing this right? Is this good? I don't I don't know. <laughs> um, but I just once I started, I could not stop. I just couldn't. I, I totally fell in love with all these a lot of them almost feel like flash fiction mm -hmm. um, in certain ways. Uh, and then, of course, it's <laughs> definitely evolved from when I was just kind of like boxing things and coloring it to, you know, doing crazy designs and all that. And, you know, bigger pieces and grander kind of ideas and things that I can do. Um, yeah. So it's really I haven't been doing it <laughs> that long. Um, I just did it so obsessively for about six months straight that I had like all this, you know, a whole backlog of stuff so much that later that year I could go and um, go to like a like a holiday market and even sell things. Mm. So it was yeah, it was it was really great. It jumped more to my awareness recently uh, because I don't know if you if you made a bigger push in it or people just started noticing more or I just started noticing more. Uh, but you you've garnered a lot of recent attention from it and um but you're not new to it because you know you you were you had something going on with patreon with it for a while and mm -hmm. literally in my memories today as i was preparing for this interview i posted something about um like where the red fern grows like my son had gotten to the to the bad part of when the red fern grows and i was looking through the comments because there had been a lot of comments and then you had commented that you'd done like a a blackout poem from that so yeah. that, was, that was a year ago today that you commented oh, that, that you did that earlier. Um, and you were so yeah, my it, boss, uh, commissioned. Right. Those. And it was a commission. So you, yeah. it wasn't just that you were doing it. People were paying you specifically for it even a year ago. And that's mm -hmm. become a huge thing for you now. So is it just that I've just noticed that uh, you're doing it more now? Or was there like a, a recent surge on your part? Um. Yeah, I think, well, when I was doing... I think because of the Frankenstein ones, a complex ac accident of life that definitely garnered a bit of attention with the, the Stoker nomination. Um, but also in like I, I had finished that, I did that collection. It came out last July. I really had no um, plans to to make another collection anytime soon. Um, although like J Jacob and uh, from Apocrypha and I had certainly talked about if I were to do another collection, you know would I stay in that same vein as, you know, like gothic or, you know, uh, he, he suggested, you know, only do female writers. And I, I thought that was a, you know, a great idea. Hmm. Um, but we really, I, it wasn't on my mind. And then in January, my brother passed away. On, on the way that I was supposed to be editing. So, um, and I don't like just sitting around, like, I, I feel weird if I'm not doing something with my hands. So this entire week after my brother passed away, I was like, okay, I have a whole bunch of blackout poems that are found, but I haven't colored. Mm -hmm. So I was like, I'm just gonna color and, you know, make designs. It's something, you know, I can distracting, but I'm not, I'm not doing too much heavy lifting with my brain or anything. Um, 
so I started coloring those and I was just looking for, I was like, I'm going to go to wonder book and video, which is a place I get all my, my used books. And I was thinking about things to pick up and I was, I had gone to like my favorite, my favorite bar <laughs> and was telling them <laughs> about, about this. Uh, and, uh, someone suggested the secret garden hmm. and I was like, Oh yeah, that might be a really fun one to do. So I, I was going to go and get it, but I didn't have my car. So my husband went up and picked a copy for me and, uh, I started doing it that day and I think I found like seven different poems like right away. Um, they were really, uh, and I think this was about a week or so after my brother passed away. They were really uh, feeling personal. Like, I mean, and Secret Garden is about death and change and all that kind of thing. So. Uh, Unfortunately, the book that my, my husband, had, husband had purchased for me had really slippery pages. Oh, goodness. So it didn't really take well to colored pencil and marker was smearing and it was, yeah, it was a big mess. So someone at, at the bar, White Rabbit, she brought in her childhood copy of The Secret Garden for me to work with. So um, unfortunately, the pages didn't really match up with the two books, so I couldn't recreate <laughs> a lot of the poems right. that I had found in the other one. Um, but I think it was just because of that, because I, in a little over a month, I made uh, something like 60 poems mm -hmm. from The Secret Garden. So I, and I was posting them like that. Yeah, yeah, I remember. <laughs> So I think that's probably why it was just like, Jesus, what is she doing? <laughs> <laughs> People responded to them. Um, yeah. I Well, I also just didn't realize that I had any kind of drawing ability. Um, yeah, I've, I've, I've spent the last 20 some years, um, 20, 25 plus, uh, you know, thinking that I couldn't draw and and therefore stopped doing kind of visual art i wanted to do a lot of visual art when i was a kid i would paint and um use chalk and all that kind of stuff but then decided i was no good um so i just stopped doing all that and blackout poetry really um brought that desire out in me again and i'm like okay well you know, at least I can make like stripes and swirls and this is fun. And then when I got to Secret Garden, um, I was doing collage work with the illustrations, but then realized I probably was not allowed to be doing that if it was something I wanted to publish. Right. Um, and reached out to that a very well, well-known artist, Graham Rust, and asked his permission, which he was like, no, sorry, <laughs> 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 which I totally respect. <laughs> Because I think it's like the public, he can't give me permission because it's yeah. like the publisher. Um, but so that forced me to um, recreate a lot of the poems I had made with my own artwork. And I like them. <laughs> I, I was impressed. Uh, there, I, I remember guess. one you were doing with a, like a, maybe a dragon and kind of had scales. Oh, yeah. Worked into that, it. Yeah, and that, then... was from, um, that was a different commission. But right. yeah, that. Uh, yeah, no, I've uh, and then I, like I eyes and and teeth and just all sorts yeah, of my interesting teeth. things. <laughs> <laughs> I like to see teeth. Uh, yeah, it really uh, opened a door in me that I thought was long ago shut and locked, which is a very secret card me thing. Yeah, to say. there you go. Um, <laughs> uh, and it was just so weird how um, like it really making that collection just really uh helped me through that time and it's um i don't know yeah it was it was i wasn't expecting it at all and and i think that's probably the that's the way the, a lot of these things kind of come about and it's it's deeply personal mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's yeah, i feel like it's it's pretty painful um a lot of parts of it but um also i think a very beautiful i think it's it's hopeful in yeah. the end I, I enjoyed them very much. And, uh, you know, you were, you'd kind of gotten to a point where you're almost apologizing because you had posted so many and everybody's <laughs> like, no, no, it's great. Keep going, keep going. And then it seemed like that your commissions picked up. Now, of course I'm, I'm watching from the outside, but it, it seemed to pick up to the point where you actually had to 
design a website in order to manage the commissions that were coming in. So um, to, to what degree did the demand rise uh, from that, that period? Yeah, I mean, it went it went pretty uh, high where I was at one time doing had seven commissions going at once, wow. um, which is <laughs> not, not uh, recommended <laughs> um, <but laughs> because like the thing is, I, I can usually do the poem part pretty quickly. Um, and so it's just they're waiting on me to like sit down and color, except like, you know, it's very much. And that's why I make, if someone does a commission for one poem, I'll make three to five because you just never know what's going to, what's going to happen in the, basically the artistic process and if they're going to end up liking it. Um, So I, I would have to sit down with with the poem and it's almost like very weird where I'm like, what color are you? What shape are you? Please tell me, (laughs) tell me what's supposed to be upon you. Um, and, and sometimes that, that can get a, a little difficult, especially when someone requests a certain color scheme, mm-hmm. um, which I like doing stuff in certain color schemes, but, uh, I don't want to be, you know, too repetitive. Right. Um, or I don't want to do the same kind of blocking. And that's when I start to get into, okay, I'll guess I'll just draw a giant eye on this. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Or I'll start cut- cutting stuff out. Like, you know, I just finished one where I made a dragon scale heart. And, you know, cut out just hundreds of these tiny little scales and glitter and glue and all. I I went to bed that, like, one night and I forgot to wash my hands. I woke up and there was, like, cat hair all over my hands. Oh, gosh. So much glue. (laughs) (laughs) Like, my whole, like, writing chair, my chair in the living room is covered with tiny little scraps of paper. And it probably drives my husband insane. (laughs) (laughs) Do you ever have anybody buy more of them like you present five options and instead of just taking one they want yeah. more or they want and, them and all that's, that's my goal <laughs> oh, okay <laughs> there's that's a motive always, there i try to make them so good that you can't possibly like walk <laughs> away from all of them <laughs> that's good stuff um, yeah so i mean the dragon the dragon one i made three just because they took so much time uh, i usually do make four or five but they just took a really long time so and then he ended up buying the all three so um that that is always the goal that's good marketing <laughs> but it's there. also okay if they don't because the thing is i'm gonna charge a lot more if it's sold individually with the commissions you get a discounted rate if you buy uh more than one oh, okay there you go so it's a pretty it, it's a pretty big discount so <laughs> but they're never getting you know going to waste right they'll get, right. They'll get sold somehow <laughs> i believe uh, let's let's kind of get into the weeds a little bit here. So if if you're looking at process, like you start you start with a particular book or a particular page. So um, get me from I guess the book to the page, from the page to the words you pick, from the words to the design. Like like walk me through that. Um, and so it depend if I'm doing like a commission, um, I always ask people if they want me to stick to a theme, like love, family, inspiration, friendship, kind of thing. Um, Otherwise, I'm just going to go like crazy. Like I was just using using a, a Hunter S. Thompson uh, generation of swine, which is always fun because it's always like America is a cesspool. Right, you right, know? right. <laughs> you know? so it's got a lot of fun stuff. But I, I tend to start with, you know, some kind of anchor word that's going to lead me into either... Um, uh, some kind of metaphor, you know, metaphors are, are really, really big, like, um, or, or similes where it's like, I, you know, I'm like a pond, I'm like a window, I'm like a, you know, right. that kind of thing. Um, and I'll usually kind of follow it down to maybe like three or four words and see if that grants some kind of idea that's going to hold water. Um, because you need to, after a little bit, once you get them like middle of the way down, you need to see if there's something at the bottom that's actually going to help you finish it because otherwise you're going to end up like, yeah, just angry at yourself for starting this beautiful thought that has absolutely no direction. Um, And also like a lot of people, I, I am kind of right now kind of stuck in the left to right up down thing, which is, you know, very 
American way, you know, but you can go all the way around and play with direction and stuff like that. Um, or, uh, there's kind of like, I'm trying to think of, uh, like a good one that I did recently. Sometimes, and I've been trying to do more where I start in the middle, mm. you know, cause a lot of times I'll start and I'll, I don't mind ending it short and then drawing something at the bottom. But sometimes it's a little bit better to start in the middle because there's going to be a little bit more descriptors there. Hmm. Um, wonky, like just crazy wonky words I like to start with. Unexpected words. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> uh, I, I really love, I try not to build words from other words, but sometimes it's necessary because... Um, for, in <laughs> for instance, <laughs> well, I was just doing Patrick, uh, Freevald's murmur. Yeah, I saw those. Um, and Patrick is a very good, uh, writer with a tight writing style and he's not, uh, very reliant on the to be words, which yes. is good. You're not supposed yes. to be. Um, but for the purposes of a very short poem, <laughs> <laughs> sometimes you need a was. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, or something. <laughs> so, I mean, there that can get a bit frustrating. Um, there's also the matter of tense. Um, a lot of stuff that I work with is written in past tense. And I like to write uh, Black Up Homes in present tense, uh, mostly. So you kind of got to play with that a bit. <laughs> or at least be open to... Um, kind of experimenting you can cross tenses with them but mm -hmm. it gets a little um muddy sometimes a little confusing and and that's when you get to erasing too much which is bad because it'll tear the words right out of the page if you're using something older than you know 1990 yeah. <laughs> so every every ray bradbury i have is the worst copy <laughs> to make mistakes in <laughs> It like you erase one thing and it rips the ink right out of the page, and like the pages are real brittle. Um, but people, I've had people request old copies because they like that yellowed kind of look about it. You can't make too many errors, <laughs> right? As as you've been doing this, do you do you notice patterns in how maybe? all texts are written or is it very very different from author to author classics to modern and all that sort of thing you definitely get to see people's favorite words <laughs> that's funny <laughs> see that a lot I, I you know that was my my hesitation about doing frankenstein i mean i was just making frank the frankenstein ones for fun before you know jacob said hey let's stop selling those and <laughs> put them in a collection um, and I was like, I'm scared it's going to be too repetitive mm -hmm. because like every page has monster on it. Every page is desire and, you know, yeah. love and parent and child. It's just like, there's a lot of it. Um, so I, yeah, I was scared that it was gonna, it was going to be too repetitive, but I, I think it actually, it worked pretty well because it, you know, it was a nice through line, um, without, without throwing monster in your face eight times. Though I think there is a poem that has monster and monstrous. <laughs> just like, well, what, what might as well lean into it at least one time. I was like, I hey, Shelly used monster and monstrous on the same <laughs> page. <laughs> now, is it, what are the different challenges compared to say like classic to modern? Are, are you noticing, because like, apparently Frankenstein gave some trouble with, with the with the repetitive word you know your guess would be that like the classics would just be flowery with all this language and then like you you know maybe the modern would be more terse but what have you found in what you're doing um yeah it really it does really depend but I, I mean on the whole you're right uh the classics are a little bit i think easier to work with because they're they they are more descriptive and they you know give you a lot of a, a lot of room to play around um uh if you have something that's like dialogue heavy mm -hmm. that gets a little rough sometimes because there aren't enough descriptors and uh in between things um yeah i 
I would say I'm just looking at my bunch of books yeah. that I have over here. I definitely have have a lot more classics than than modern ones. Um, though I mean, like Stephen King is hard to work with, honestly. Yeah. Why is that? Um, he's got he's got a lot of words. Oh, okay. <laughs> there there are a lot of words, um, and it's there's a lot of hard words. Like just like they they feel hard, mm -hmm. and the poem is very kind of like utilitarian. Mm. <laughs> I feel like sometimes, um, I made I made some a commission out of uh, like Carrie and oh, wow. uh, a, a bunch of like four past midnight, um, and basically they're really good for poems about writers. Oh, yeah, I, <laughs> I would say. <laughs> I have made uh, most of the poems I've made from from Stephen King have been things about writing, because it's yeah. just like he ha he always has a writer in writing in, in on the same page as like shit and <laughs> like <laughs> darkness. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that would so, that would limit uh, your range a little. Yeah, <laughs> but I mean that being said, I have a whole bunch of. Um, short story collections from uh like small press horror uh collections and those are great to work with because um or they're anthologies i mean um because it's a, a whole bunch of different author styles and sometimes i'll even cross like authors and see how it kind of changes mm. so um yeah those are great and because i mean small press horror authors i mean they know how to write some groups <laughs> <laughs> That's, that's I, good, have uh... a, I have a Christy Demeester poem in here that I that I haven't sold yet. I made a couple years ago, and uh, for Patreon, you know, I people that pledge the Patreon they get a poem in their mailbox every month, and a lot of them are a, that I send out are some of the older ones that I've done, and I I just can't part with this Christy yeah, Demeester, yeah. but I can't send it out. Like I need to either keep it forever or sell it for more. <laughs> I don't know. I just love it so much. Now, that is a different aspect of this type of writing. Now, I suppose you could do, you know, the same way that artists do prints of things. You, you'd have that option. Um, but you send you you send out the piece. So, like, yeah. you create something. It's gone. And, and then it's gone. Yeah. Um, I scan them, but, yeah. What What is that like? How different is that from, say, just writing a story that you're going to, you can put into an anthology and it's kind of, it's sort of it's yours forever different. kind of thing. It's weird because like I'll go through my um, my Dropbox of, of all my stuff and I like this year alone I've I've made a hundred blackout poems so like with the collection and everything mm -hmm. so it's uh, and most of them are gone you know they're just out away bye and you know a lot of times I don't even get to spend any time with them <laughs> like we bond. <laughs> in the creation and then it's like bye you know have fun with your new mom and dad <laughs> um, <laughs> it, it's it's very strange because you know you you spend a lot of time and and uh put a lot of emotion in into them and especially ones where it's like i you know do some kind of piece on it where you know i'm like oh my god i can't believe i made something like that and, you know it's so beautiful and it's like i'll never see it again um so and 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 when I scan them too, if they're neon, that doesn't pick up on the scanner. Uh, if they have you know some kind of paper craft on them, they don't scan perfectly, so they're like obscured weirdly. So it's like I don't even get to hold on to. It's like a like a counterfeit ghost yeah, of yeah. like my babies. <laughs> you know? um, so it it does it does feel weird, but you know I I think it's also just amazing that people have it in their home or you know it's making someone happy and i gotta i like to that's why i kind of like to make anniversary and love poems and stuff because uh you know that that someone you know they can look at it every day and be like you know this is how much someone loves me you know mm -hmm. i mean more than that but you know yeah. <laughs> be like just know i'm loved and that you know my art could do that I would hope. I don't know. Yeah, I if think they look so. at it and they're like, "What's that ugly piece of shit?" Call are... that a dragon. <laughs> like hit Instagram hashtag blackout poetry community 
and like the whole world opens up with just beautiful pieces it's amazing like a lot of times if i if i get stuck and i'm just like what's you know what's a new way that i can like do something on a poem i'll go through there for ideas and maybe even different color combinations and stuff because i mean you can only draw like a box so many times yeah. <laughs> like a bubble um but there, I mean, there are people on there that do things that are way more daring than I. I'm like, I, I'm so terrified. Anytime I put a ruler to the page. Yeah. Because, like, it's, you get one smear the wrong way, and it's like, it's over. So, like, I don't know. I don't know how they have the confidence. <laughs> <laughs> Although I have, I, like... I don't know why this came to me in a dream only like a few months ago, but I get, I have nightmares about messing up blackout poetry. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. About like spending hours on it and then like just smearing the whole thing or dumping coffee on it or like oh, wow. whatever. Um, but in a dream I had or a nightmare I was having, I saw myself like, cover up a word with a like a smear of marker and i was like oh and i grabbed another page and i cut out the word that i had smeared and i just put it over the part that i had smeared and i was like i woke up and i was like oh i guess i could have been doing that <laughs> <laughs> i really didn't even think about it yeah. at all we gotta pay more I attention mean, to our nightmares i guess yeah right i haven't had any since so <laughs> <laughs> tell me about the um Tell me about your award nomination. Oh, well, I... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I was nominated for a Bram Stoker Award for Complex Sex and Living a Life, and it's crazy cool. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm... Uh, I, it was a complete shock, and I'm... Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty much the, the happiest I could ever be <laughs> right about uh, right about now. Um, do you do you think you would have ever tried to um, create that book if someone didn't approach you and, and almost demand it from you? I don't know. I guess no, I guess not. I don't think so. I, I don't think so, because it's just just I. I it's not something I, I thought people wanted. <laughs> right. So, um, yeah, because if I had ever thought it was going to be in a book, I probably would have put even more thought into, like, the designs of the, the poems. I mean, because I know a lot of people, you know, say, oh, you can, you know, she was really smart with these designs and stuff. And I'm like, I, I could have been smarter. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, what? I had a, I had no idea. Even though I and I had to recreate several of them because they were sold, mm -hmm. um, and because the the neon doesn't scan and all that right, kind of right. stuff. So if I had known all that, I wouldn't have done so much neon right. <laughs> and sparkles and and stuff like that. I mean, that doesn't just it just doesn't come through um, because so many of those like in person are sparkly. Right. Right. <laughs> Do, Which is um, just so weird. <laughs> so putting together a book of uh, blackout poetry, you've, you've mentioned the um, the limitations. You know what you can do with color and and you know f your physical media and that sort of thing. Uh, what else is different about publishing one? Like you put, you're having to send the original copies uh, to the publisher, or what? What all is involved? So yeah, and this was also very weird because it was happening during COVID, right. during the beginning of COVID. Um, so Jacob and I actually live in the same state. So if we had been able to get together, we probably would have done all this together. Mm -hmm. um, I would have, you know, given him the, you know, the, the, the originals and that would have gone through. Um, but as it was, I just ended up scanning, scanning them all myself and taking the pictures myself and sending him the files and, he put it together that way. Um, yeah, the, like the only thing is I had to rescan all of them because I had scanned them at too low a resolution right. the first time because I was like, oh, I didn't know they wrote in a book. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they were just going to be for me, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so hold on in case I sold them. Um, yeah, so I, I had to rescan all of them and, you know, that's the way we did it. 
I think that, uh, yeah, if it hadn't been COVID, we probably would have would have gotten together and, you know, gone through them all and drank some beer and <laughs> it would have been a fun whole time. <laughs> uh, once, and, uh, once something gets nominated for an award, you're almost obligated to do it again, right? So right. What, are, what are your thoughts in the future of like more books like these? Do you, do you have anything percolating or in process? Or... Yeah, so the, um, the, the Secret Garden Blackout Poetry Collection is going to be coming out this summer. Um, and it's, it's called uh, the, the Birds Other Animals Shouldn't Charm. And it is a, as I said, very, very personal. It very much uh, deals with the topic of grief. Um, and uh, in, in both its consumptive way and its uh, transformative way. Uh, there's it's divided up into three parts that go through kind of uh, what kind of a, I feel like a narrative flow that uh, the secret garden has on its own but also one that I created probably from starting with the third poem that I made and uh, unlike a complex accident of, accident of life which has all the poems in the order as they appear in the book mm -hmm. This is very different. Mm. This is stuff from all over the book, arranged uh, to my liking, like a collection, like, you know, actually curated the collection. So being like, oh, oh they just all fit, cool. <laughs> <laughs> Which is so funny because I told Jacob, I'm like, I'm gonna put them in order first and then we'll figure out what order they're supposed to be in. And I put them all in order. I'm like, never mind, it works. <laughs> <laughs> good enough, That's good what enough. I said, we don't need to talk about this anymore. It's perfect. <laughs> Are there challenges when it comes to, to say, copyright and things like that? Like, is that an extra consideration when you're thinking about publishing something like this? With, so, and that's why uh, we try to stay with things that are in the public domain. Right. Um, and no pictures. Yeah. <laughs> I learned the hard way. Um, but because it falls under transformative art hmm. um, and the, basically the poems that I'm making from the page don't tell the same story as what's on the page. Right. So in that way, it's not really stealing it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, uh, in this one, in this one also, I do some collage work as far as um, more like cutout poetry, where I drew my own pictures and then I had blacked out the poem ahead of time, but then cut out the words and, and arranged them. Um, so it definitely has that difference from a uh, complex accident of life. So you're gonna see a lot more illustration. Um, it's, it's real creepy, there's some really creepy stuff. <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely a horror poetry collection. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> do, you, do you ever foresee yourself doing an, something that's not in the public domain? Like just asking an author, can I just take your stuff and, and make something out of it and seeing what happens or? Is there, is, it, is there something better about doing the public domain because people know the work more? Or? Um, yeah, I think it's more of a, I'm, I'm too chicken shit to ask. Oh. Um, <laughs> uh, no, I, I have certainly thought about it, especially, you know, authors that are getting up in age. Um, I would very, I've made a lot of The Last Unicorn blackout poetry. Um, mm -hmm. I've met Peter S. Beagle. Um, I felt like I had a pretty good rapport with him, but I don't know. I could just be imagining that like every fan does. Uh, I, I've, I've, I've toyed with the idea of reaching out to him, but I know he has had a lot of legal troubles in the past with people stealing his work. So I may I not be open to it. Um, but I mean, I, I do a lot of commissions from last unicorn and they, always turn out beautiful that is probably one of i mean my copy now is like it thin yeah, yeah. <laughs> like all the pages that have been ripped out of it it's, it's just floppy and thin and That's still funny. i think i could probably find some really great stuff in there some authors might like it just because you keep having to buy new copies to, to keep yeah <laughs> <Maybe>. <laughs> just... <laughs> we bought so i have so many copies of that one edition of frankenstein <laughs> God, i got so funny. many <laughs> if um if someone were looking at getting into this how would what would you direct them to do just go for it or is there is there a better way to to enter into it 
I, I would say go and uh, just pick up pick up a book um, if it's not your favorite book. That I would say if it's a book that you know pretty well, that might that might help, or it might be a hindrance. I'm mm. not sure because um, I try not to read a page before I black it out and just go in blind, even yeah. if I know what the page says. Um, but uh, I would say either just like a random book, like a random like dollar store book. Hey, it could yeah. be it could be a Shirley Jackson for all you know. <laughs> There's some good stuff uh, in there apparently. Yeah, really, you just need to pick through. I mean, we get, uh, at, at my job, we get the, um, like, religious pamphlet books that people, like, drop off, and I like to do them with those. <laughs> those are fun. That's and, funny. Um, and I'll leave it, and my coworkers have started doing it, too. So, it, oh, yeah, it's, funny. it's just, it's really fun to do and just mess around with. Um, and, yeah, it's not, because I, I think it's a little less... Uh, kind of strict yeah, as okay. other poetic forms um and i mean you can't edit really right. once you've i mean once you've colored it and stuff there's there's no going back right. um so i think it's just something to be loose and free with and have fun and you might get something really like serious and <laughs> and devastating out of it but i mean that's that's all the better because you just went in to have fun and you made like beautiful art out of, you know, it's basically a hidden gem. Does so, does your mood change the poem? Like when what you're feeling, oh, what sure. you're going through? For sure. Um, I the first time I picked up Frankenstein, I didn't find anything, and uh, and then months later, I picked it up and found everything. And I don't know what the change was. I was in a new apartment. Like, you know, we were going through the most devastating thing. And then we moved into this beautiful, well-appointed downtown apartment. <laughs> <laughs> and I was I was feeling very happy and hopeful. And, and I decided to pick it up and, and make a gift for the, the woman who helped us get our apartment. And then from there, it just opened up. So, I mean, that's why I kind of keep stuff around, even if it doesn't spark anything at first. Because... You know, there's always another day and another page. You mentioned writing from a place of grief, and then you've talked about writing from a place of like more happiness and maybe centered, self-actualized, all that. Um, obviously, there's probably an argument to be made that that happy, healthy, and joyous is a is a better condition to write in. But it, it, is it just the it, you have to be in some kind of emotional state, or is there something in between? <laughs> it's tough right it's it's tough to say because right now i'm still very much in a place where i'm having trouble writing new stuff mm -hmm. um and and editing um like i don't i don't know why that is um i think i just feel very heavy inside um so blackout poetry like really helps me it's like a nice little like quick one off you get that satisfaction right away from writing the poem. Right. And then you get it a second time from finishing the poem with, mm. with color and everything. So I think it that is giving me like the the writerly satisfaction that I need to not just go, I'm done and like walk away. Um but uh like like I said, I am editing I'm supposed to have two novels come out this year. Oh, um, wow. <laughs> um so I'm 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 still editing, but it's it's so weird how slow going it is and how it how it feels like a slog when in November I had just finished like my first two novels in five years and was like, Yay, I'm back. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> and now I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> Um so it's it, yeah, up and down. Um but I, I I always try to kind of soldier ahead, even if I'm not feeling it mm -hmm. so much, uh, just because I know the work needs to be done. And once it's done, I'll feel so much better. Um, but I'm also not trying to punish myself mm -hmm. for not being in that headspace, because that's, you know, that's not my fault. That's not anybody's fault. You know, f frustration, exhaustion, depression, they, they get you. Um, and yeah, so I'm still trying to like 
be healthy in that way. That being said, if I'm in a mood, I'm going to embrace that mood and write some <laughs> dark stuff. Yeah. Um, I am right now using, uh, so I'm kind of using a hybrid um, blackout poetry and my own writing to write uh, some monologues that uh, I got, like uh, last week I was asked to contribute to this like Shakespearean festival thing uh, for a Midsummer Night's Dream and they were looking for two monologues and I was like oh good I haven't written anything in a really long time like you know but it sounded like such a cool thing like it sounds like this awesome outdoor event and I just knew that I would regret it if I didn't try so um I, I got a copy actually they gave me a copy of Midsummer Night's Dream and I started going through um Helena and Her Hermia's lines and making kind of blackout poetry from their lines and uh, building monologues, building monologues for each of them from that and kind of filling in with my own writing. Hmm. And uh, so it's been working out pretty well. <laughs> uh, I got a little discouraged earlier, but I think I'm, I think I'm back on track. Uh, it's, but they're not comedic. <laughs> right, yeah. By any stretch of the imagination, not comedic at all. Uh, yeah, I do. I definitely uh, Helena's monologue is focused on addiction. It's it's very sad, and 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 I used other parts of um, Midsummer Night's Dream when they're talking about like the the magic love juice from the flower that they put on the the lover's eyes. So I used stuff like that to talk about the drug that she's addicted to, and so I'm kind of like piecing all this stuff together to build a monologue but still sounds very Shakespearean because of the word choices and stuff um but I think I might be going on a little too long because it's supposed to be three to five minutes <laughs> I'm on like four pages in so some editing we'll I guess um but it just it, it sounded too neat to pass up and what's the know, what's the end product of it is someone going to perform it or yeah so it's it's supposed to be this uh big outdoor uh thing where all the pieces are inspired by midsummer summer night stream but there's aerial dance performances there's sculpture there's wow. a like audience participation like uh like magic kind of thing and the pieces that i'm supposed to write are uh performed at different times during the day but they connect so when people hear the second monologue basically they'll be like oh like they're connecting events um which is a challenge in itself oh yeah perhaps. um so i i've been watching a lot of <laughs> midsummer night's dream reading a lot of midsummer night's dream <laughs> uh, if someone wants to get hold of you and get a commission what do they do uh, you can. They can either email me at Jessica McHugh Books uh, at gmail dot com, or they can head to my website McHughUniverse dot com, and uh, pretty much all that's on it right now is commission, <laughs> commission blackout poetry. And uh, you can head over there. There's a there's a thing to commission uh, blackout poetry from the books that I have on hand, or you can request a. Mm -hmm book and i'll go and pick it up used and it's just like an extra charge they're not really ever that expensive so right, right, right. and i always love getting the book you know i i always like to eat the cost a little bit on the book because i'm going to be able to use the rest of the book sure sure <laughs> so and i you know i i love making them i got a i got a big old long list of books on hand though um but i always love adding to my <laughs> potential collection, much to my husband's chagrin, I'm sure. <laughs> when we moved away, I got rid of so many books. <laughs> right. just it's all you did was start over. <laughs> it's terrible. But it's also like people, you know, someone had said Watership Down, and I had Watership Down, oh, that'd be a but good I'm one. not ripping up my copy of no. Watership Down. <laughs> no. That would be a <laughs> good one. monster. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome.